things in this world who you're looking up to in terms of how they're handling life. And one thing that I've been looking uh, up to with Brad over the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic, is he's been like, you know what? I hit the treadmill today, three miles done, or oh, you know what I did? I, I walked to work, I didn't drive. I, it was a <laughs> four mile walk, you know, this kind of, and I, I'm always like, gosh darn it, Brad is really, he's really inspiring me. I gotta, I gotta move more, I gotta, I gotta get up, I gotta move. And the other day I FaceTimed Brad Geiger and he's covered in sweat and he's he's kind of out of breath he's like oh hey hi how you doing hi and i'm like and i just kind of assumed for, so for the first couple of seconds i'm like oh i caught him on the treadmill no big deal but then i vocalized it and i said hey i'm really proud of you brad good job on working out today and he says <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I wasn't working out. I just finished a very large burrito. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, uh, my God. So the truth of the matter is it was our 25th wedding anniversary, and we had planned to... <laughs> Well, you know, 20, 24 is, I think, lace, and then 25 is burrito, right? It's you, giant burrito, got to, yes. you got to follow, yes. Sure. So uh, we, we had planned to do something, but our plans kind of got scuttled at the last minute. So uh, I, we had just, she, my wife had taken uh, the days off of work, and so I'm like, well, you know, we should do something. So uh, we decided to <laughs> at least have lunch together. Uh, the, the, there's a new Mexican place in our neighborhood that is really great. Uh, but it's about a mile away, which is kind of too far to drive. Uh, and, and it's a nice, healthy 20, 25 minute walk. So I went there, had a fantastic burrito. We uh, walked there and back and but and it was a very warm day. So by the time <laughs> I had gotten home between the large uh, lunch and just sweating uh, through my shirt, I looked like I had been, had a whole workout, even though the truth of the matter is all I really had was lunch. <laughs> Nothing says classy husband on his 25th yeah. like a man with his readers down on his nose and holding the menu out in front of him going, Garcon, bring me your largest burrito, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of wine goes best with a large burrito? Would that yeah. be Coca-Cola? Can you, can you pair a milkshake, perhaps, with this burrito, Garcon? Garcon? I like that I gave him a French name for your burrito order. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to say hello, everybody, and welcome to the Heart Smart Comic Lab, the show about making comics. <laughs> and making a living from comics. I'm Brad Geiger, the editor of webcomics.com and the cartoonist of Evil, Inc., And I am his pal Dave Kellett, cartoonist of Drive and Sheldon and co-director of the comics documentary Stripped. And this week's hour of comics advice is made possible by your support at patreon.com slash comic lab. So Dave, Dave, let's talk comics. Let's talk comics, my friend. We have a big show for everybody because I, frankly, I think we're going to need to devote some time to this. Patreon has yeah. made a, a, a big series of changes uh, to their site and kind of hinted at more to come. Uh, yeah. And there, uh, there, I'll be honest, Brad, you had put it perfectly if you want to say it, there was, there's been, there's good, there's bad, and then there's butt ugly with this thing. And yeah, we've had a lot. We're going to have to really d dig in deep on this one. And so I've got a few notes uh, for things for us to talk about. Uh, you can tell me whether you agree. I've got some of them categorized as good. Some of them categorized as bad. And I think we can probably agree what the butt ugly is. Uh, we're going to talk about that logo uh, at the end. I got to tell you, gang, you know you're in for a treat, and I'll, I'll tell you how you know. Brad Geiger is ready and fired up to write a to to go on a topic when I see the show notes, and it's just scrolls of notes. It's just yeah. scroll after scroll of Brad going, and I'll tell you another thing about <laughs> Patreon. And I'm like, oh boy, we're in for a show today. <laughs> well, okay, so let's start with the good. And like I said, uh, uh, we're, we're going to take this categorically, uh, and I think that one of the good things about the new Patreon uh, uh, interface that they've uh, unloaded on us, it's, an in, it's a new interface that uh, goes desktop and app, and the app right. has gotten a complete redesign. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the overall member experience, the user experience for members, primarily on the app, but it also applies to the desktop as well. Right. I think in, in total, I think it's good. All right. Now, I know 
If you're like me, you're probably hearing a lot from your members and your patrons saying that they don't like the user experience. It's ugly. It's this. It's that. Uh, I have to say, having done this for a long time, I get a little bit of uh, deaf ears for that because readers hate change, period. Right. So I've been down this road a lot of times and I've seen, by the way, the last Patreon redesign, everybody hated. And now it's the Patreon redesign or I'm sorry, it's the Patreon experience that they prefer the one that they hated a few years ago. So I think the member experience in in total is uh, a good thing. Yeah. And you're going to hear those kind of creator complaints are going to be like, Hey, whoa, 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 way too sweaty. Smells like a burrito. And you're going to have to tell your readers, listen, you married him 25 years ago. You're stuck now. (laughs) This is what you get for a penny and for a pound on this scenario. There's there's no coming back. You you knew what you were getting into. (laughs) Oh, she she so did not know what she was getting into. If you took a look at me from 25 years ago, uh, quite a a good 50 pounds lighter, dressed in a shirt and tie and suspenders every day. Uh, You know, what? oh. oh my God, it was a completely completely different person that she ended up with. I, I feel bad for her. I, I definitely made out that whole thing. Well, so she you're based on your description. So a, a bow tie suspender. So she basically married a snake oil salesman from 1890. Is that what she yeah, married? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Step all right I up, needed, step right up. That's for all, for everybody. All I needed was the straw hat and I could have sung <laughs> bass in the barbershop quartet. <laughs> but, but anyway, let's <laughs> jump it back in on it. I, I agree with Brad that that there will be complaints. Um, yeah. and, and so this is kind of my least worrisome part of the whole yes. thing is the is the user interface. Um, yeah. And I'll be honest, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of our listeners have experienced the same thing. I have found uh, that 80 percent of my patrons don't even interact with Patreon yeah. once they've pledged. And mm-hmm. I'm being quite sincere about that. I don't know that they check it. I don't know. That they look in. I don't even know that they use the app. They, they are they are purely support based, even though we always say you want to give them, you know, reasons to join all the extras to join. A lot of people don't even look. And so I think the bulk of my readership is is completely oblivious to any of these changes because they haven't logged into Patreon in months. And I'm being quite, quite sincere about that. Brad, do you find that most of your readership uh, doesn't even use Patreon or do you find that you have a much more uh, interactive group? I don't know. Uh, and 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 part of the reason I don't know is something we're going to also talk about uh, during this show. My analytics don't tell me. Oh, that's true. Right? Yeah. In other yeah. words, if if all so here's the deal. If all I'm going on is the interaction cues that I get from Patreon, it's actually very little to go on. Right. Because uh, and think about the way you use different platforms and different social media. Do you put a favorite on everything you've read? No. Even if you and like I don't it, comment. Uh, yeah, I don't. No. Yeah. So it, unless Patreon's analytics, which are very, very anemic. Unless Patreon's analytics told you what your interactions were, then how would you know? Right. So uh, my sense is that interaction is low, but I'd love interact. I'd love some analytics to tell me the honest to goodness truth. Well, I mean, we might as well jump into this. This was something we had planned for the bad, but let's just finish the thought, which is. Graftreon, G-R-A-P-H-T-R-E-O-N.com has existed for multiple years. And I think Brad can correct me if I'm wrong. I think is run by just one programmer based on Patreon support. Yeah. And I'll be honest, that's where I go when I need data on my Patreon yes. account. It's all just yes. scraped data from uh, Patreon, but it tracks it. It graphs it. It, it, it compartmentalizes it. And mm-hmm. there is no reason why Patreon couldn't do that better and do that more immediately inside the system itself yeah. with, with analytics that you couldn't get from public scraping, by the way. And and have it right there for us. I mean, it's uh, we, Brad and I were talking about it before the show. It's either willfully done, in which case it's a little bit malpractice on, on Patreon's part. Right. Or frankly, as I tend to think, it's kind of half acidly done in the sense that yeah. like, oh, yeah, I guess we could do that. We just don't have a programmer on it right now. Yeah. But the idea that you and I, Brad, or that anyone listening can't see where someone clicked to come yes. on to patreon.com slash comic lab and become a, a, a patron. 
that's bonkers because that kind of that one single thing could change how we market, how we talk about our Patreon, how yeah. where and how we do big pushes for Patreon. Um, and we have never had that data, never had it. No. And 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 bef- uh, here's the deal. I know that if I, I you can hook up Google Analytics to your sure. Patreon page. Sure. Right. And I have done that in the past. I've taken a step back from Google Analytics when they uh, uh, when they released their newer version, partially because it, it was just a pain in the butt to go through and set up on all my sites. And I'm like, am I really using this? No, not so much. Uh, partially because, and this is me being tinfoil hat, uh, I, 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 my antennae kind of indicate to me uh, through absolutely no proof, nothing, no, no proof to back up this feeling that uh, the new Google Analytics is just a much more deep uh, reach into the data of my readers and the people that are using my site. Right, right. It, it, the ultimate benefit is to Google there, not to you or not to your listeners, right. your readers. You know? Right, and yeah. I don't feel super comfortable being party of that. Yeah. And again, yeah. no, 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 nothing to back that up. Just a, just a nuance or, or a, a feeling I've got. So, uh, yes, I know I could get that if I hooked up Google Analytics, but Dave is right referrals should be something that Google or that, that Patreon rather is tracking super, super closely. It's the, one of the most important things that we as creators need to know right. what of our outreaches is working wet or best. Are they, are they clicking in through Twitter? Are they discovering us on another site? We don't even know about mm-hmm. what, wh- where are these people coming from and where, and where are they going? Those are the best analytics we could have, and it's nowhere to be found on Patreon. And and uh, I will knock Patreon once more on this front, which is that it would not be that hard and not be a big outlay on their part if they wanted to just buy out the guy that did McGraftreon, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. go to him or her uh, and say to them, uh, listen, here's uh, $150,000, $200,000 for all of Graftreon. Here's half, half a million dollars. Like if you, if you had dedicated a couple programmers in-house to do that, that's going to be a significant cost, right? Right. This person has it already up and running. It's already working for tens of thousands of different Patreon accounts. Why not just buy it and bring it in-house? I, yeah. I, sometimes I, I'm a little nonplussed by Patreon's moves, and this is one of them where I'm like, I just don't get why they haven't done this. It seems yeah. so basic to me, you know? No, I agree. But going back to our, our original topic, uh, I do think the, the user experience from the member side is good. And, and part of that is because, again, and I suggest this uh, to all of you listening, I follow and I, su- I, I, I uh, subscribe to about 17 different Patreon uh, people. Uh, people wow. are doing similar things to what I'm doing. People are doing that I'm just interested in their outreach. I, I've got about 17 people I, I uh, back on Patreon. And uh, so I have, I, I also experience Patreon as a user. And I, all of a sudden, I, I'm, I, I see a whole lot of content that I was missing before. I, there's, I, I, I like the way it's presenting new material at the top. Uh, there's a lot in that user experience from the member side that is right. very good. Right. Uh, I even don't hate the new way they do multiple images on a post as much as I thought I would. The new image gallery instead Uh, of giving you one big boss image and then little icons to indicate that there are more uh, uh, images to click through, it gives you more kind of like a tiled experience. And I, I, although I I don't love it, I I do like the fact that it's instantly uh, obvious to the member that there's more images here. And I, I, I got a feeling that I, I post my sequential stuff in a panel by panel way, I got a feeling that's going to get more use now because they can actually see that it's there. Yeah, I will admit to the same thing with the Brad had, which is that uh, I never liked the sort of uh, large, gigantic image and teeny tiny little thumbnails because you're always mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're never 100 percent sure what you're supposed to click and what, you know, how far, yeah. how deep did it go? So I do like the idea that now you're immediately presented with the idea of like, no, there's multiple images. 
my only critique is that it just seems like it could have been more artfully done if that's yeah. a way of saying it brad mm. it looks a little hodgepodgey a little thrown together um i don't love the the look of it but i love the usability of it in what it's trying to do which is hey gang there's multiple images ready for you right and along those same lines, another thing that I'm, I think is very, very good is the new Patreon collections. OK, uh, I think and, and don't if there's some of you out there that are saying, well, that's the same thing as tags. It's really not. It's really not. <laughs> In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a bunch of reasons it's not. But uh, starting the conversation here, I've been complaining for years that one of the problems that Patreon has in terms of people like us, Dave, people that do visual stuff, it was very difficult to catalog what you were offering to your members. True. And as a result, if you had a sizable archive, if you were doing this for any appreciable amount of time, uh, it was diff difficult to point people to all of the different stuff that was available to them. And that's a real right. problem right. Uh, because that's the value of their pledge that you're talking about there. So you... And being able to say, hey, check this out. Here's a complete story that I did in uh, 2012, right? right? Click on this to go and see it. They weren't interacting with the tags that I could see a whole lot. Besides, the tags are kind of small and hidden down there. They're not top of mind. Having the, the collections not only is, is a better interface to understand what's going on there, but a lot of times I would try, I would like uh, click on a tag and then uh, copy the URL. And then I, in a post, I'd say, you could read this entire thing here and I would post the URL to the tag so that I could actually get them to click on it. Instead of saying, right, click on the right. tag at the bottom and send them in a place and, and make them search. And you know what? Nine chances out of 10, that URL didn't work and led to a completely different place on my site. It was impossible to direct traffic. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff and I've got a lot of different stuff on my Patreon. I've got right. sequential stuff. I got single panel stuff. I've got uh, lots of different storylines dancing all over the place. I post a lot of stuff. Having collections is a really great way of cataloging that for my readers. And I got a feeling it's going to be a value add uh, down the road. I'll, I'll be honest. Tags worked in one way. It told yeah. you like when you were about to join Patreon, it told you that when you joined, you would get 400 images under such and such a tag, right? That right. was that was impactful. When yep. you actually got into Patreon, it was like Brad said, it wasn't that <sighs> useful. Like, yeah. And so I will actually disagree with Brad that I think collections is a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. but I still think it falls short in in as much as it is clear to me, even after a decade of using it, Patreon was not built for images and does not put emphasis on images. Yeah. It was built for musicians first and then podcasters and bloggers later or, mm -hmm. or not bloggers, vloggers, I guess is another way of saying right. it. Uh, and um, and images just Patreon doesn't handle it well. It doesn't handle the archiving yeah. of images well. It doesn't handle the 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 flow of a uh, like I said, an archive of, of, of comics. So I yes, collections is better, but uh, you know I don't know. I'm still kind of like it's not it's not the greatest, you know. I I don't know. It's but it's better. I will I will give you that. It's better. Yeah. Well, I'm like a whipped puppy because it's been years that I've been asking for some kind of cataloging, and this is this is. Uh, some kind of cataloging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, right. it's like I'll, right. I'll take what I can get at this point. You know, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's it's good. It's it like you said, step in the right direction. Uh, I'm a, I'm more excited about the step than you are, but we both agree it is a step in the it right direction. Step. Yeah, yeah, and I listen. I understand it's it's really both Brad and I understand this. By the way, as we're going through this critiques and praises of Patreon. Yeah, it's hard to manage and to do uh, a site like this that has to. Oh, yeah, has to has to be workable for sculptors, dancers, mm -hmm. theater troops, um, bands, uh, comic artists, uh, poets, yep. you know, like it's it's not the easiest thing in the world. I, I get, so I want to say that before we go yeah. too big in the weeds on the critique here. Yeah. Brad and I love Patreon. We appreciate yes. what it's done for our careers to the nth degree. And so all these critiques are sort of lovingly made uh, because mm -hmm. we know it is hard to program for something this big and unwieldy for this many different yes. types of art. 
So, uh, it, having said that, here's another one. <laughs> having said that, <laughs> here's here's another one that I've got in the good column. I want to hear where you fall on it. I've got it in the good column, even though I can't use it yet. Okay. And that is uh, e stores. They set up a, an ability to sell digital downloads, digital goods through your Patreon. Uh, it is not available to NSFW creators yet. I'm hoping that's going to be something that develops uh, soon, but uh, I'm excited for it, even though I'm not using it, because when eventually they do send it over to uh, NSFW creators, I think it's going to be a really, really powerful tool in yeah. a couple of different ways. Number one, uh, I, I love any chance to put a price on something. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. If I tell you that that's a $5 ebook or a $5 e-comic, and then next week I give it to you for free, you just got a $5 value. If, if I never put a price tag on that thing and I just say, hey, here's a free ebook, it's not too exciting. Yeah, it's no. a free ebook. It's a PDF. But here's a $5 ebook you're getting for free. That's something. So I like the ability to have the prices out there. I like the fact that if somebody missed a special offer, they can go over and buy it when they find mm -hmm. out about mm -hmm. it on Patreon the next week. I like just the, the ability to have that there as a, a passive revenue stream that I can set it up and then let it sit and do whatever it's going to do. I think it's a real good thing i think it's a, one of the in the good column and i'm not even using it yet yeah and i think it's also uh best used for younger artists or artists getting started in their careers for whom uh -huh. they don't have a storefront yet right uh, they don't have a, a shopify or or a e-cart or whatever it is you know they they've got nothing and so yeah how nice if with this captured audience to have an e-storefront um and honestly i can see myself like brad using it for the the stuff where I want to create a market value so that I can give it away, yeah. but also such that if they did buy it, great, How, extra gravy, all, yep. all the better. So yeah. uh, I, and I, so I, in general, like Brad, I kind of have no critiques on this front. I, I, in, I will say this. I'm so glad that they established the e-store because maybe finally, God willing, they will stop talking about merch for members because oh my God. I, I and no one in the world are interested in a $75 comic lab mug that, yeah. that no one asked for and no, and no one wants to pay an overpriced yeah. uh, amount for. There's that meme from Mean Girls, you know, stop trying to make fill in the blank happen. Right. Yes, this, yes. That's how I feel about merch for membership. It's, it's, it's stop trying to make it happen. It is not going to happen. Not However, happen. here's another one I've got in the good pile. All right. Uh, one of the things that Patreon really started banging the drum on with this new release was they're uh, they're saying they're making the shift to social media. Right. They're reimagining mm -hmm. themselves as a social media platform. Uh, that's that got a little bit of an eye roll for me because they don't seem to understand what people like us use social media to do. And because they're, they're like, Patreon is going to be social media. You're going to be able to talk to your members. You're going to be able to chat with your members. That's not social media. I don't go to social media to chat with people who already know me. I go to social media to find people who don't know me yet and introduce mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. what I want social media. Discoverability is what I'm looking for in social right, media. Right. Uh, so until they really get, and, and by the way, I got to hand it to, uh, I, I've got to hand it to, to not only uh, Kickstarter, but I've got to hand it to Substack. I was checking out Substack just the other day. Substack has really improved on discoverability. I got to hand it to them. I got to hand it to them. They've done a real nice job with it. Patreon still has not gotten there yet in discoverability. However, I do want to note, and we'll put this in the good column, they do have a page. It, it, unfortunately, it's only available on desktop, but it's a, because uh, I, I, I don't think I saw it on the app. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a little link there that says, it's an icon that says, find creators you love. 
And it is, you can put in keywords and find creators doing that type of stuff. And my not safe for work friends who have been pissing and moaning about this for years, it includes NSFW creators. Ah, well, and well, here's my counterpoint to that. I like Brad. I love the fact that exists. I will say this. I didn't see that. I didn't yep. stumble upon that. I don't even I know. know where to look for that. So yeah. it's a little, is it, Brad, am I wrong to say that it might be a little bit buried in terms of, <laughs> I have not, I have not physically found that yet on the site. Well, if you go to the, actually, I just checked it out because I was like checking myself. If you go on the app on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see there's a little ma- magnifying glass. Mm-hmm. That's where it is. Okay. So I um, don't use the app. I don't download the app. And uh, does it exist on just the website version? It does. It def- In fact, I saw it on the website version first. Uh, okay. uh, so it's definitely on the website and it is in the little micro uh, uh, magnifying glass on the bottom right of the app itself. Uh, and so th- they are making an attempt again. It's, gotcha. it's another gotcha. one of those whipped puppy things. It's been it's been anemic for so long that they made a step and I'm, I'm cheering them on because it's 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 something. Uh, by the way, great use of anemic. What a good word that is. Yeah, unfortunately, I used it twice. I'm getting repetitive, but uh, but I, I do like the name. No, no, no. I, 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 in terms of Patreon's efforts, anemic is the right word to mm-hmm. use. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so you're saying though that uh, not suitable for work creators now come up on the search when you're when you're looking. So there's both a category and they finally come up. Like if I type in NSFW, if I type in Brad Geiger, you'll now appear. Is that what you're saying? I'm yes with an asterisk. Okay, okay. <laughs> I tested it out on desktop and I came up. I my face was blurred out, but a lot of people were going to tell you that's a Listen, plus. Listen, I'm going to say minus. that's a feature. That's not a bug. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a-, a feature. Uh, I just tried it on the app and nothing comes up for for so it, there might. Okay. And of course, they've got to play by different rules because of like the Apple App Store has rules on how they can handle that sort of thing. There might be a little something going on there, but. Uh, they are they are making discoverability a little bit more of a priority. And until they can get to the level of Kickstarter or even Substack, uh, I'll take what I can get. OK, well, that's uh, kudos with kudos to Patreon for all of the, the, the new features that fell into Brad's good category. Uh, Brad, why don't you jump us into the stuff that fell into your bad category? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the bad uh, first of all, and we talked about this a little bit, uh, the pivot to social media is a little bit of uh, a, a miss for me, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not looking for Patreon to be social media uh, unless they really go in hard on discoverability. And uh, part of that comes down to that new chat function that is available only on the app side. Uh, not on the desktop side, which, by the way, my readers reacted strongly to. I I evidently I've got an awful lot of readers on desktop uh, as opposed to the app. Uh, So they did not like that. Uh, It feels I I immediately clicked on it. If I hadn't been doing this show, I would not have clicked on that chat to uh, to launch it, to get it started up. I would have left it uh, fallow and uh, unstarted, you know, like you've got to start it before it's there. So if you haven't started up the chat, your members don't even know that it's there. Right. Okay. If I hadn't been doing this podcast, I wouldn't have clicked the button because I was not interested. Because, again, like I said, I've already got, frankly, too many places that I can talk to my readers. Yes. Like I can I can I can talk to them in the comments. I can talk to them on the discord server. And by the way, I find after years and years of priming the pump, the discord server for for my Patreon is actually going pretty good now. And I've got people making posts on their own and they're talking back and forth. And, you know, it's it's right. it's, it's taken a long time. But now right. I feel like I'm cheating on my on my girlfriend. Right. Because it's like. Why am I doing this on the chat? I should be doing it on Discord. And if I'm doing it here and it's not there, are they feeling cheated on? So on and so forth. So it's 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 spreading out my uh, uh, my abilities way too thin. I feel like I should be on Discord. And here's the other thing. When I did start posting stuff in chat, my uh, readership was split. I'm telling you, Dave, right down the middle, 50-50. Okay. 
50% of them could not see the chat at all, but were getting notifications that I was posting <laughs> in a chat. And this was, and this was on the app. This, they weren't desktop. They were on the app getting notifications that I was posting in chat, clicking all the right icons. Cause I was walking them. They were giving me screenshots in the discord server where we actually could communicate. They were giving me screenshots, showing me what they were doing. They were doing everything right. Nothing was showing up. So 50% of them were interested, but couldn't see a goddamn thing. The other 50% of them could see everything and couldn't care less. Well, I will say as a, as a, a patron of Brad on patreon.com slash Geiger, <laughs> um, I got the notification that, Hey, Brad yeah. Geiger has initiated the chat. And I, my, I, this is my reaction was kind of telling. Cause I, I literally went like, what fresh hell is this? That was what my reaction was. I was like, I like Brad, I don't need another place or want another place to chat yeah. with people because Brad I mean, I know this sounds like, oh, poor little rich boy. A lot of people want to talk to Dave Kellett or Brad yeah. Geiger or right. But mm -hmm. I have uh, Twitter. I have threads. I have Blue Sky. I have Instagram. I have Reddit. I have Discord. I have email. And then there's all the direct messages in all those systems, right? Yep. And then there's multiple platforms within a lot of those systems. So yep. with Patreon, people can direct message me. They can put things on my posts. And I have three Patreon accounts. So yep. I, I, and I, again, email I know. And email newsletters. I know this exactly. I know this sounds like the complaints of poor little rich boy, but yeah. I have too many places where people can reach me such that sometimes I miss completely a basic yeah. a question or reaching out that's direct. Like, hey, Dave, I have a problem with blank, 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 blank. Can you help me? I miss it completely because I have 15 places where people can message me. So, yeah, I, I'm not looking for that for patient. Now, I, I get it. I, I understand that they want to pivot to social media and I understand yeah. why. The problem is that's not what I'm looking for Patreon right. to do. Yeah. I want like a version of what Brad said. I'm looking to find my audience elsewhere and then right. bring them to Patreon. Yes. It's a little tricky when Patreon becomes the way that I find my audience. Now, yes. if they have better discoverability, if they have referability so mm -hmm. that they say, hey, you know, if they do a better job of saying, hey, you like Brad Geiger, you might also love right. Boppity Bippity, you know, and that kind of thing. That can be helpful because you know it's someone already captured on the platform. But mm -hmm. for me, for social media, I'm looking to reach out to the millions of people who have never heard of Sheldon or Drive or Dave Kellett or Comic Lab right. and share a bit of it with them so that I can have a, a, a someone discover me, become a casual fan, become an ardent fan, become a patron, and then they're on Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the moment that we're in speaks to how broken social media is that Patreon even feels the need or the possibility that people want this from Patreon. Because, yeah. Brad, it's like, remember when you were a kid and your teacher was out sick and then you would get the substitute. But if your teacher and the substitute were out sick, then you'd get the PE coach. And you're like, oh, right. well, I guess we're just doing this worksheet all day, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You get like the fourth tier teacher. And I a little bit feel like that's what's happening on social media. Twitter's mm -hmm. out sick. All right, well, mm -hmm. then we'll go to Threads. Ah, Threads isn't really working it. So then Patreon's like, well, I could also be a social media. And you're like, I don't know that I want this from you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's just going to be a PE coach putting on a video about health. You know, like that's yeah. not what we want from Patreon. <laughs> 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 and I, I'd like to see I'd like I'd like to see them succeed in actually becoming social media like and, and by that, if, I mean, yeah, discoverability. If, if there was a huge, huge crowd. Yes. Yes. Right. Agreed. Like I, if they if they did more things to cross promote, cross pollinate uh, discoverability, all of that stuff. Find me because right now, again, what we need, what we creators need is a way to find the new the next patron, the next person, the next new reader. That's right. what we need need I, another way to chat with the people i already got nobody's asking for that and right. that and by the way that's that's only a small part of what social media is to say that you're pivoting to social media but you're only going to do a quarter of what social media does by the way what's the other social media aspect of this can i retweet can i share can i do any of that stuff that's social nope. media no nope. all this nope. is is chat this it's is just, not yeah. social media it's just yeah. it's just a fancier way of uh the comment section yeah it's a message board in a way i'm yeah. not excited about it i'm not yeah. excited and and having started it 
here's here's my here's my pro tip to you don't start the chat because now that i started it i've got to i've got to figure out what to do with it and by the way this is only going to last for another seven or eight days but i'm trying to post things there i'm trying to you know find out if anything gets a response i am literally the only person in this chat and and by the way what am i i posted what i had for breakfast the other day uh like like i like i like a damn you know, hipster. I I'm, I'm posting my breakfast. Uh, I don't even enjoy that. And, uh, and I'm like, Hey, Hey, here's, here's a bon yay I had. Let take a look at that. Nothing. Just nothing. It's, it's, I, I don't do it. It's a trap. Don't yeah. uh, start the chat because, and also it's like when I post something there, I really do feel like I should be posting it in discord. So now if I post it in both places, I'm like, what are we even doing here? I'm posting stuff. If, 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 don't do it. It's a trap. I, first of all, I co-sign that with Brad. Uh, I I have not started it, and I will not be yeah. starting it. And for this very reason, like I don't, yeah. I don't need this fresh hell. But also, Brad, even with the even within the Patreon ecosystem. So take away everything that I just said about having to post on Threads, on Reddit, on on Blue Sky, on Twitter, on this and that. Right. Take away all of that. Even within the Patreon system, there's now uh, uh, comments on a post. Yep. There's now um, chat. There's yep. now Discord. There's now yep. direct messages. Yep. That's four ways. Readers don't need that many ways. You need yep. one centralized system. Like this is where you can comment. And frankly, I think post based is the best way to do it because it's on topic. You know, you have to make the posts anyway. So do it there. Mm-hmm. I would advise, I like Brad, not starting on chat, but just keeping posts and the commentary underneath posts to be the active place to send people. Yeah. And it's actually a problem because once you do start it, then what what I found out is that if people responded, I don't get the notification that they responded because again, Pearl, come on. So unless you're checking it and and by the way, that there's all these notifications, (laughs) right? And I don't want a hundred notifications on my phone. So, and I got a feeling this is pretty common. As soon as I load something new, I turn all notifications off because I know they're going to pester the living Christ out of me. Right. So I turn all notifications off and then I just try to turn on the ones that I actually need. As soon as you turn one on, you get a flood of all the ones that you don't want. So I've, fully open this up to the fact that I may have the correct notification off. But if I try to turn them on, I get a hundred things that I don't want because they're all playing the same game with these freaking notifications. Right. So, uh, I, I, they're that when they do talk to me, it's, it's maybe a day and a half before I realized they were talking to me. Yeah. Well, before we move on to the next topic, let me ask you one last thing on the, on the concept of chat. Yeah. Do you love or hate that in launching chat features, yeah. they are sunsetting the member post section? <gasps> love it. Love it. That's it. That's one for the good column. That's one for the good column. Member post was horrible. Anybody could post on your member post if they were a member or not. Like a member of the public could just post. On, oh, really? On was that right? true? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I seem to think so, because yeah, okay. I got some yeah. people posting there that I have no idea who they are. Right. Uh, but uh, they. they it was it was it was like where posts go to die. Talk about not getting notifications. I would I I open it like once every six months and realize somebody posted something there that I had no idea yeah, that they had same, posted it there. Same. We get no notification inside the the ecosystem of of uh, Patreon. And half the time it was it was stuff that, you know, it, it, quite frankly, you're, you're going to ignore anyway. Yeah, uh, and yeah. uh, I just. Uh, and 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 again, if if you're if you want to send me messages, be a member. You can send me messages all you want. But this was this was outside of membership, and and oh, it was just the worst. And then of course the problem there is that they make a comment or they make a post, and you never respond to it. Now you're the bad guy. Getting ready, getting rid of the membership posts area is a big big one for the good column. Hey, if you're listening while you work, take a minute to stand and stretch. And while you're doing that, we're going to tell you why you should join us on Patreon. When you do, you're going to get hours and hours of podcasts that we've recorded just for backers. And exclusive Patreon posts that go even deeper on Comic Lab topics. And access to our exclusive Discord server, which is a thriving community of professional cartoonists. So you can support the show you love and get tons of actionable resources for your own cartooning. 
And listen, if you can't swing a pledge this month, we get it. No worries. Yeah, yeah, listen, you can still support the show by rating us wherever you get your podcasts. Just leave a five-star review and a few kind words. That, along with mentions on social media, is incredibly helpful. Now, everybody, let's talk comics. Well, Brad, I've got one final one to add to the bad column that you and I talked about before the show, uh, because I know it's bothering both of us, is the new... the new posting interface, which uh, yeah. has you on a multiple page system, selecting multiple tiers in a way that's not very clear. You know what? Why yeah. don't you take everybody through what? Because your reaction as a not suitable for work cartoonist was even oh. stronger than mine with the potential for disaster. So take everybody oh, yeah. through what the system is and why and why it doesn't work. To make a post now on Patreon, you got to go through a two step process instead of having everything on the same screen you've actually got to go through two different levels uh, of, of uh, getting all your stuff done, right? Two mm-hmm, different mm-hmm. screens. And it's really, really bad. The first screen uh, is, you know, you upload your stuff, you give it a title, you do the whole, now this is, a, you know, this is your read-in, and that's it, right? All of the stuff that you're uploading and all, all of the uh, text is in one page and then you click a little button that says next and then you get to the next page which is where you select your tiers the tiers they've got completely wrong and they and they've got to fix this this is something that's got to be fixed and fast because what happens is you can't see the tiers that you've selected right so if you've got something that only goes out to certain people you click on something that opens up the tier list then you can deselect the ones that don't get it and then you okay that and then it disappears again so yeah, you can't just give it a quick little visual check oh yeah before i hit the publish button did i have that right you know you you could you can just kind of give it what i call one last lingering glance before you send it off into the world right you can't do that it's hidden OK, so now at the top, yeah, you've 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 got your who can see this. You've got the select here and then it disappears. Then the next thing down is early access. Is this going to be an early access? And then the next thing under that is schedule post. By the way, what have you not done before a early access or schedule post? You haven't set up any date for this at all. It's all in the wrong order. Publish now is all the way at the bottom. Schedule post is below early access. If, here's, here's my point. If you're going to do early access, first you've got to find out when you're posting that stuff. That means schedule post should be above early access. Instead, right. it's counterintuitive, right. Yeah. right? So you should yeah. select the date first for schedule post and then early access. But they haven't put any thought into that. It's in the wrong counterintuitive order. It's a bad interface. Uh, Then add to collection is good and tags is good. Now uh, you've got everything done, by the way, and I've just described the entire second page. Who can see this early access text preview, schedule post, add to collection and tags. Now at the very bottom is published now. Dave, did I remember to set all those images up correctly? Well, you can't glance up to look, Brad. I'll tell you that right now. Did, did I forget one? Are they in the right order? Is there anything wrong with them? And do I have any problems at all? You can't fucking tell because it's in a different. And by the way, I don't know this for. Uh, let's find out. I've got it open. Uh, let's say that I um, screwed it up and I want to go back. Uh, how, oh, I can click the back button. All right. Now, but if do you I lose go, data when you go back? Like uh, I, by that, I mean, do you have to start over again? Th- that's a good question. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to deselect a bunch of stuff and I'm going to go back and do a little. Te- uh, test here now next let's go to select here okay thank god i i kept uh <laughs> i kept the tears but n- nevertheless nevertheless i shouldn't have to go back and forth between two pages to see everything that's there it should be all and inf- it should be a mission control here's my images here's my text here's the here's the tears that it's going out here here's the date here's the schedule it should be mission freaking control everything should be there going back and forth between two different pages is a horrible horrible interface yeah it's um this is really unfortunate because i was trying to figure out when i was looking at it the first time what was the impetus to make it two pages right because someone Mm -hmm. clearly had a discussion about this of like, oh, let's do like you prep everything. And then I guess you get it ready to post is the idea of the second page. But like you, I feel like this is done by someone who hasn't 
done a lot of posting on a very frequent basis, you know? Yeah. So um, like, like Brad, I will say this also falls into my bad category. Unlike yeah. Brad, I will say it's not as disastrous for me <laughs> if I do it wrong. Uh, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Like the worst way I could, I could mess this up with this new system that they have is, oh no, people who weren't supposed to get a drive image early got a drive image early. Or, yeah. oh no, people on certain tiers uh, who, who didn't, uh, you know, uh, sign up to get this kind of Sheldon, they're got that kind of Sheldon. For Brad, that could be truly <laughs> disastrous because as a not suitable for work cartoonist, yeah. You can have you can have a very uh, uh, unexpected image to a cartoonist that, or to a, a patron that did not sign up to that. This is a great time to be a five dollar backer uh, of the Brad Geiger Patreon because it's only a matter of time before I slip <laughs> and send out not safe for work stuff to my five dollar or my two dollar backers. It's just it's a matter of time before it happens. Yeah. It, it can't not happen because they have created a system that is going to breed this kind of mistake. And and right. and by the way, it's very easy to see if you if if you if you deselect tears and then make it hidden so you can't check it of course that mistake is going to happen i'm going to get into a hurry one day i'm going to uh, misremember and oh did i check those yeah i checked them and hit publish or hit schedule and i'm going to have stuff going out to people who aren't supposed to get it and by the way we laugh about it now but sending NSFW stuff to somebody that isn't supposed to get it, that could lead to some real, real serious legal problems. Yes, All right. Yeah. This is a problem Patreon has to fix immediately. Listen to me. Listen to me. Mission control. It's got to be mission control. Everything's got to be on one screen so you can check everything off. Boom, 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 done. This is a system. The user experience they set up for making a post is going to breed mistakes. This is the tone and energy of a cartoonist who is terrified to be arrested in Mississippi is what this is. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. And, and also just a responsible person. I don't want to send NSFW stuff to somebody who is doesn't want it. That's that's creepy. That's horrible. Right. I don't want right. that. Right. I, I'm a nice no. guy. I'm a sweet yeah. old guy over here, Dave. I don't want to no, do I'll, that. I'll be honest. I, I say this as a as a lover of Brad's work. Yeah. I, for the most part, don't want not suitable. I mean, if it came in, it would not be the worst thing in the world. But like, right. I I don't I don't want it. And so yeah. Brad wants to be able to reach out to those people and give them what they want. You know what I mean? Yes. And yes. so, uh, um, so yeah, like Brad, it's just it's just a bad way to do it in the sense yeah. that it makes it now you as the cartoonist has to sort of have a mental checklist. Or oh an actual God. physical checklist and say, did yep. I do X, Y, Z? I did. Now I go on to step two. Did I do X, Y, Z? I did. Okay. And uh, because otherwise, th what I'm saying is a posting interface should make the job easier. It shouldn't yes. add stress. It shouldn't add uh, uh, gray areas of did I do the thing? Did I not do the thing? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that that's why absolutely I agree with Brad. This falls into the bad uh, category. I will add one before we go on. Oh, to the, the butt ugly, I will yeah. add one more onto the bad category, yeah. which is Patreon is moving away from the word patron and onto the word member. And yeah. I will be honest, this a little bit it feels like moving away from your core branding to mm -hmm. me in that Patreon launched with the idea of you can have art patrons mm -hmm. and it's not like Michelangelo. You can have art patrons at the one dollar level, five dollar level. You don't need to find a rich Italian family in Milan. You can right. have a patron that uh, is, is on the micro level and helping you succeed because you've got a thousand of them. And bada bing, bada boom. That's how Patreon works. And they're yeah. called patrons, you know. Yeah. And for me, that worked because it separated the idea of a member. Eh. I don't know. You could be a member of a gym. You're paying for mm -hmm. that. You could be a member of a social club. You're not necessarily paying for that. You could be a member of the fifth grade. You're not paying for that. Like yeah. member is a little more wishy washy of a word to me in the English language yeah. than patron, which specifically historically has meant I am paying to help support an artist. Yeah. Now. I can see the benefit of membership because it's equivalent to when Amex says membership has its privileges. Right. Membership connotes what does a thing do for me or I am a member of this group. I belong. I get that. But to me, the language is less clear as to 
the bigger picture of why they're being a member of something. Mm-hmm. Brad, what? Because I feel like you're happy with the move to member. What? What are your thoughts on it? I am not as upset as you are. I don't. I. I, I agree with you. The switch to, in nomenclature is a little bit weird. Yeah. However, I will say this: if if it catches on, if it catches on, I'm not going to miss all the people who misuse the word Patreon as a word to describe their members. In other words, I'd love it if everybody actually said, hey, I'm sending this out to all my patrons. I like that. But how many times, Dave, do you see somebody say, I'm sending this to all my Patreons? No, they don't. People do that? No. Oh, my God. uh, I'm I'm cursing you with this. Once you see it, you'll never unsee it. Oh, no. So many people. So many people. And the the P is lowercase. It's horrible. They say, I'm sending this to my Patreons. They're using Patreon as a word to describe their members. Patreons? Oh, that's even worse. Oh, why does the plural make it worse? All their Patreons. Gosh darn it. I hate it that when things when when certain linguistic things trigger with me that make me sad about the US yeah. education system. And I'm like, oh darn it. Come on, we can do better. What happened? It's not that hard Sending to figure it to out. My Patreons. Oh, oh, geez, Louise. Come you on. Wait, people. you're gonna see it all over social media now. Uh because no. people oh. do it constantly. So if if it addresses that well then, i won't now because now they're making the move to membership yeah. so we're, we're good so i don't like and, and by the way i i kind of always liked backer i liked backer as a word i was use that use that synonymously i'm sending this to my backers uh i didn't mind that a bit but uh here we are I, I, with members yeah, i think kickstarter was the one that uses backer the best right don't they they yeah. you, they use that they employ that with their marketing yeah well, let's jump into the final one for this week, Brad, because uh, 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 if you remember, uh, uh, the structure was we had the good, the bad and the butt ugly. What is the butt ugly, Brad, for this week with the Patreon uh, redo? Well, you know what the bug ugly is. It's that freaking logo. That logo is horrible. It's a horrible logo. It really is amazing. They started out the Patreon logo, the original one, which goes back to what, 2013, I think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, really was quite beautiful. It was a nice, nicely designed logo. Then they updated it, I think, in 2017, and uh, they took a lot of the charm out of it. It got a little bit more mod looking. It got much more abstract. Yeah, it was uh, a red stick with a black ball, remember, in yep. terms of, yeah. Yep. It was pretty pretty uninspired. It was very, very uh generic quite frankly yeah. and and it didn't have any heart like the original one did but it's like okay well yeah that's fine we, we'll use that we, we can stick with that and then this blob that that looks like a kidney bean is absolutely uh, it, it, it's it, it's everything a logo should not be and by the way by the way i say this in Full knowledge, because some people will say, well, you got to have you read this, Dave? You got to look at how they're going to use it. They've got this whole plan for using it where every time you use the logo, it's it's different. They're going to that little amorphous blob is going to contain something different. It's always going to be animated and wiggling around and there's going to be something different inside of it. Uh, Here's the deal. The whole point of a logo of a logo is to be repetitive. So it burns your itself into your brain so that you come to uh, link that visual with a whole bunch of uh, branding points. It's a whole idea of branding is repetition. The same image. There's a reason that Coca-Cola, a multi-billion dollar company, it's the same logo. It's the same approach. It's the same, even when they do Diet Coke, even when they do Coke plus this and that, Cherry Coke, Vanilla Coke, it's always the same. You know why? Because they put a metric shit ton of money into figuring out how to get their product to stay in your brain. Patreon doing this, I think it's, 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 it's not only bad, it's butt ugly. Yeah, there's been a movement in logo design to go to ultra minimalism lately. Yeah. Uh, where it's everybody from, I don't know, Gucci, Chanel, Chanel, uh, I'm trying to think of other logos that have got Adidas, where you take out any three dimensionality and you go to one color, hyper simple, hyper clean. Um, and the thing is, a lot of ultra minimalism works if you have distinct, clear, crisp lines 
that mm-hmm. that have a shape to them. Mm-hmm. This feels like someone took a blobfish from 10,000 feet down at the, the Mariana's <laughs> Trench, brought it up. And you know how they just kind of explode and become a goo? Yeah. This is just an amorphous blob. It doesn't, yeah. it, at the barest level, it resembles a pea. Yeah. It more resembles one of Dali's melting clocks in mm-hmm. one of his paintings. You know, it's like, nah. that's what I feel like <laughs> when I'm looking at it. It feels like, nah, I'm, I'm a Patreon, nah, that kind of thing. I, yeah. I, I just, there's no there there in terms of shape or design or super minimalism works when there is a crispness and there mm-hmm. is no crispness here. It's just a blob. I can't say it any other way. It's just a blob. Well, not only that, but here's this whole deal. The whole idea of it's going to be something different every time and so on and so forth. Do you think that here, and and I don't know the answer to this question. Do you think that's going to be somebody's job at Patreon coming up with new uh, looks for this? Or is it going to be some kind of AI script? Because I got to tell you, there's only one way to do that efficiently. And that is to make it some kind of an AI that just takes keywords and does all that. Now, I have. I have no idea how they're going to do it, but I, I also can't imagine that someone Patreon, there's one person's office just uh, whose, I, whose job it is, is to come up with new logos every time they want to use a new logo. That's, that's yeah. ridiculous. No, it's, it's, they're going to create 10 of them and then it's going to be forgotten in about a year. Yeah. Because honestly, adding a bunch of weird animation into that logo is just shining a shit. It doesn't do anything oh that God. makes it better. You know what yeah. I mean? It's. Because when you pour data into an amorphous blob, now you have an amorphous blob with data in it. It doesn't make it, do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't make it better. It doesn't make it more distinctive or unique or you're just, it becomes a shape that is transmitting information. And so yeah, I'm, I'm really underwhelmed by that. And I'm frankly amazed that now twice a company that's ostensibly <laughs> packed with some of the best artists in the world <laughs> yeah. on this platform can't find somebody that's better at logo design. I mean, I saw a bunch of people throw out designs just like, here's how I would have done it. And you're like, holy hell, yes, that's so much better. But frankly, even the original one that sort of had a retro uh, um, uh, Atari 1983 vibe going for it. Yep. If you know what I mean? Like it had kind of a cool retro early 80s vibe. I quite liked it. And I think a lot of people quite liked it. So um, I get that there might have been some competitive logo that they were stepping on its toes. And so they moved away from it. I understand that. But you Mm -hmm. could have done something in that family and kept it. And uh, I don't know. I just it's it seems like an opportunity loss because it's it you see it on the web page of of Patreon and it just looks dumb. It doesn't hold its place or hold its head high at all. Dave, having talked about the butt ugly, I just realized I got one more to add for the bad. <laughs> All right. Okay. Or, or actually, maybe we put this under wish list. Here's yeah. as Patreon moves forward. Here's something that I would like them to do. How many of us are running multiple Patreons? I got to figure it's a large number, right? right. I mean, right. I know just among us, I, I've got pay, I've got my stuff. I've got Comic Lab. You've got Drive and you've got Sheldon. There's a lot of people that are running multiple Patreons. Yes. And holy cats, I so would love to have uh, a multiple login account like I, that I could go back and forth on my Patreon app or on the desktop. Just right. go back and forth between Evil Link and Comic Lab. Just deep, deep, beep, beep. But instead, I got to log out. I got to log back in. There's two factor authentication. I got to log back out and log back in. Uh, uh, we really need multi uh, uh, user accounts for Patreon uh, so that we can, so we can get the work done that we need to do. It's, it's, it's way too much. If somebody is running more than one Patreon account, yep. we are not the only users for whom this is a problem. And Patreon right. was saying, Oh, well, this is, this is a regulatory issue with taxation and having, you know, issuing the, the sort of 1099s or whatever it is that they issue at the end of the year. They, they told me that once. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's not yeah. an unsolvable problem. You have one master <sighs> login with two or three separate yeah. accounts, each of which could be assigned a bank, each of which could be assigned an IRS number if needed. We, that's that's mm-hmm. figure outable. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to yeah. make that as almost some impossible wall that can't be scaled. But in the meantime, it means that like Brad, I have to mentally designate types of browsers for my Patreons. So Sheldon is on Safari. Drive is always on Chrome. (laughs) And then Comic Lab is like, I have to log out from one or the other one because I only keep two browsers on my stuff. 
And in the meantime, yeah. I think I mentioned obliquely at the beginning of the show, I don't use the app because it's like, which one do I log in on of my three? I don't know. Yep. And by the way, I've got a fourth one coming down the pipe. So what am I going to do? Anyway, all of this to say is yeah. uh, between this and the data tracking, it feels like two core, core business functions that I wish Patreon would tackle. Yeah. And I can, I, I see in stuff like doing the e-store first, I see, and, and Brad sees this too, and we haven't talked about this on the podcast, that Patreon is still desperate to up their income levels before they solve some problems for mm -hmm. uh, creators. And I can tell that their angel investors or VC money or however you want to classify them are, ne are at, you know, yeah. Uh, nagging them on to like, hey, merch for members, got to get that going. Hey, e-store, got to get that going. Uh, data for creators, ah, who cares? Uh, Multi-user login right. accounts, ah, who cares? You can kind of feel that emphasis is on increasing uh, income mm -hmm. first. Yeah, yeah. I, and and listen, I, it's only it's only logical that that's going to be the case. You know, at some point right. that's going to happen and, and, and they've got to make, they, they've got to make those changes, but, yeah. uh, Oh man, I, in the meantime, uh, you know, I, I mean, take a look, all of the things that happened under good were kind of scraps that we were just happy to have. Right. All yeah. the bad was kind of stuff that was really dumb decisions. And, and I throw the logo under that as well. And under a dumb decision, uh, it, it, it's, it, and again, saying that full well, knowing that I am the, the biggest Patreon cheerleader. I love Patreon. I kissed uh, yep, their amen. feet. They changed my life. They were great. But uh, it, it, it bothers me in the back of my mind that the, that, that the couple of good things are scraps. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, they, like, they, weren't, yeah. they weren't real big pushes. They were scraps. Like Brad, I want to say Patreon has changed my life. It's changed my career. I am eternally grateful to Patreon. In some ways, we are as nitpicky about this as you would be, Brad. Don't you find that sometimes you argue with family more about a topic more than you <sighs> yep. would argue with a stranger because it means more to you because they're family. You know, Because you mean? love them. Yeah. yeah and so with Patreon, them. because we love it and because it's such a great part of our career, and because we want and can and will continue to use them for years to come, I think that's the reason why we're so uh, persnickety about this. You know, as, as long as we're talking about people we love, I want to talk about our 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 listeners, Dave. I love them, and I I want them to be able to listen to this show and then get something else done with their life today. So let's bring this one in for a landing so they can get busy doing their own comics. It's time for me to say that you've been listening to Comic Lab, the show about making comics and making a living from comics. Your hosts have been my ever delightful friend, Brad Geiger, the editor of webcomics.com and the creator of Evil Inc. at evilcomic.com. And my close personal friend, Dave Kellett, the co-director of the comics documentary Stripped and the cartoonist of Sheldon at sheldoncomics.com and Drive at drivecomic.com. And the Comic Lab theme song is used with permission from Andy Creighton at theworldrecord.net. And this episode was edited by the ever-talented Matt Woodard of Woodsong Productions over at www.woodsong.media. If you love Comic Lab, you can rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify, and you may hear your review featured on a future episode. And don't forget to give us those quick five-star reviews, too. Those help as well tremendously in terms of triggering the algorithm with the podcast apps. And I will say Comic Lab is made possible by your support on Patreon.com slash Comic Lab. So we'll get ahead and... So, <laughs> so we'll go ahead and say that twice. Patreon.com slash Why Yes I Will Have a Second Burrito. <laughs> Well, Brad, you have that famous Ziggy cartoon. I can kind of see it. Pull the one to the left of you on the wall there. No. Pull that one down. Well, that's yeah, the one I, where the yeah. Ziggy talks about creating a logo for Patreon, yeah. right? Yeah, it's Ziggy in this one. Ziggy is the designer for the Patreon logo, and 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 his client is looking at it and saying, "Throw in some corn," and I've definitely seen it before. <laughs> 
I'm a graphic designer. Ziggy. Have you noticed? Yet there, I haven't seen any design firm stepping up to take responsibility for that logo. You know, the yeah. same way a terrorist yeah. organization takes responsibility. They're in the witness protection program. Nobody's stepping up and claiming your responsibility over that thing. I, because honestly, Brad, if you were to told, tell me that either a president or a vice president of Patreon <sighs> designed it themselves, I would no. not be surprised. Nope. Or somebody's it, nephew. Yeah. <laughs> 